In this lesson, we're going to use reasoning to find a counterexample to a conjecture. Explore. 6, 12, 10, 1, 50. So we could see this is a pattern. Now the conjecture here says that all but one of the vowels, A, E, I, O, U, and Y, are used to spell numbers. Gather evidence to support or deny this conjecture. At this point, we start to test that conjecture. So thinking about all the different numbers, are all of our vowels always used? Well, we could see here in the ones that they show us, 6, 12, 10, 1, 50, E is used, I is used, O is used, is, I can't see U, Y is used, is there a number that, yeah, 4, we use the number 4, 4 uses U, so that's, what about A? So start thinking about numbers. Are there, is A used? It says, the conjecture says that all but one of the vowels. So if A isn't used in any of our numbers, then that would be true. So just take a minute to think. What numbers, if any, have the letter A in them? The numbers 1 to 999 contain all the vowels except A. The word thousand is the very first number word that contains the vowel A. So the conjecture is false. Carrie created a series of circles. Each circle had points marked on its circumference and joined by chords. So we could see the chords drawn. It says, as the number of points on the circumference increased, Carrie noticed the pattern for the number of regions created by the chords. So number of points two, the number of regions is 2, so this counts as a region and this counts as a region. So the chord separated the circle into two regions. When we had three points, we had 1, 2, 3, 4 regions. Four points created eight regions, and so on. It said she made the following conjecture. As the number of connected points on the circumference of a circle increased by 1, the number of regions created within the circle increases by a factor of 2. So here's the question. It says, how can Carrie test the validity of her conjecture? So is this a true statement? Is the conjecture true or is it invalid? Is it false? So we're going to gather more evidence to test Carrie's conjecture. Zohal tried this as well. She said, I drew another circle and identified five points on its circumference. Then I joined the pairs of points with chords. I colored the resulting regions to make them easier to count. My diagram had 16 regions. This supported Carey's conjecture because the pattern for the resulting regions was 2 to the exponent of 1, 2 to the exponent 2, 2 to the exponent 3, 2 to the exponent 4. So Zohal's solution showed that this was true. Then she drew another circle and identified six points on its circumference. Then I joined the pairs of points with chords and colored the regions. When I counted, I got only 31 regions, not 2 to the power of 5, or 32 as Carey's conjecture predicted. So if Zohal only tested to 5, she might state that the conjecture is valid. But going one step further, having tried the next one, she saw that well, now this is a false statement. This doesn't hold true. The number of regions did not increase by a factor of 2. This counterexample disproves Carey's conjecture. So this is a new term that we haven't heard yet. A counterexample is an example that invalidates a conjecture. Now, you only need to find one. As soon as you find one counterexample, then you can say, state that that conjecture is false. So why do you think Zohal started her development of further evidence by using five points on the circumference of a circle? Well, to continue the pattern in Carey's evidence. B says, why is only one counterexample enough to disprove a conjecture? Well, that's a really good question. Well, a counterexample shows a case when the conjecture is not valid. Once a counterexample is found, the conjecture is no longer valid. So you only need the one. Let's try another example. Example 2. 
using reasoning to find a counterexample to a conjecture. Matt found an interesting numeric pattern. Matt thinks that this pattern will continue. Search for a counterexample to Matt's conjecture. So let's see. He had 1 times 8 plus 1 is equal to 9. Then he had 1, 2, or 12 times 8. Then 123, so 1, 2, 3. Then 1, 2, 3, 4. And he was getting a pattern on the other side, 9, 8, 9, 8, 7, 9, 8, 7, 6. So in order to continue, we have to collect more evidence. So let's do that. So the next one would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 12,345. Then he multiplied that by 8. And instead of adding 4, we can see that this pattern is going 1, 2, 3, 4. See, so to add 5 this time. And we want to know if that's going to be equal to 98765. So take out our calculators. So we'd have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, times that by 8, add 5, and we get 98765. So I want you to continue with this pattern and see if this pattern breaks down. And if you go after a little while, you might notice that it continues. And if you go after a little while, you might notice that it does, in fact, break down. If it does break down, that means you found a counterexample. So take a few minutes to keep going with this pattern to see what happens. So the next one would be... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, times 8, plus 6, and so on. Alright, it's a bit tedious. I'm going through this, and I get to 9, and I can see that this is going to continue. However, I have a little bit of a problem at this point. How do we handle 10? So I could go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 times 8 plus 10. We could do that next and see what happens. Times 8 plus 10, right? And if we do that, let's see what that gives us. Times plus 10. So times 10 to the 10, so that means just move it over 10 decimal places, right? So that would give me an answer of 9876543. But then I have 1290, so that didn't really work. So what if they wanted us to handle this differently? What if it was 1... Oops, that was a 10 here. I said the right thing, wrote the wrong thing. So 10 was supposed to be in there. So what if instead it was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0, instead of a 10 there, times 8 plus 0? Or should it be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0, times 8 plus 10? Or should it be... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 times 8 plus 0. So we're not really sure how this pattern continues, right? So I'm going to test all these three and see if it actually continues from this last place we were. Because if it was, then maybe we just weren't unsure about how the pattern was supposed to continue. So let's try it out. So I tried all of those, and none of those let the pattern continue. So we can state that at the 10th step, a counterexample is found. So let's try to write a new conjecture. So what would the new conjecture state in order to um, write what Matt thinks is happening? So we can just put in the stipulation that that's only from 1 to 9 that the pattern can tell you, and then once you get into two double digits, that doesn't happen anymore. So here's my revised conjecture. When a value of the add end, the number that we're adding together, is 1 to 9, the pattern will continue. 
So then the question becomes, okay, we're doing this. What if the pattern did continue? When is it reasonable to stop gathering evidence and to just state that this, this conjecture is valid? So if we didn't find the conjecture at the 10th step, we could have stopped there, or we may have wanted to go a step further to try a three-digit number, right? So you kind of have to look for where you think it might break down. So at the two-digit number, yeah, that would be a place that maybe it didn't work. And then if it did work there, we continued maybe going to the three-digit number. So you have to do what seems reasonable for the example you're doing. You don't want to be doing hundreds and hundreds of numbers in order to find um, where this breaks down. But some people do that. That's their research, right? Here's a theory, and then it's other people's jobs to see, well, can we disprove that theory? And some people have taken years and years to try to figure out if, in fact, that theory um, still holds true. And there's lots that have been disproved, and there's lots that have not been disproved, not only in math, but in science and other um, places of study. That's it for today's lesson. Thanks for joining me.